Uh, Rays and Yankees in the Bronx tonight. Two aces on our air and a Yankees team that's trying to climb up the standings. John Heyman, good morning to you. The day after the deadline, this day is reserved for us to judge. I feel like every year, good morning. Did good you morning. sleep after yes. all that? I sleep, yes. Okay. You were able to <laughs> My voice isn't good, but I sleep. Okay, we'll get through this yeah. fast. The day, um, we're talking about the Yankees. Brian Cashman addressing the media, and he said, and I have it right here, in terms of prying our guys away who are talented, mm -hmm. I didn't feel it was worth it. I'd rather keep Keep it and take a shot. Your reaction to the Yankees and their activity at the deadline. Yeah, I mean, they had two issues. Uh, one is they were caught in the middle between buy and sell. The other issue is if they were going to buy, they wanted offense. And there really weren't good offensive pieces left that really fit them. Cody Bellinger was the perfect guy. The Cubs went on that seven-game winning streak. He came off the board. And really, they didn't love any of their choices. So it came down to two things. Were they going to sell the guys with expiring contracts? And there were four of them, Bader, Kiner, Falefa, Peralta, and Severino. They did take offers on them. Uh, but uh, Brian Cashman's walking orders were, you could do it if you could save decent money or get good prospects back. And apparently, he was unable to do that. He went the other way and looked to buy, and Dylan Carlson was the one guy left, offensive player with the Cardinals okay. that fit, that was controllable, that would have been a good piece for them. They did offer prospects for Dylan Carlson. The Cardinals wanted to get a controllable starting pitcher back, and the Yankees just didn't have that guy to offer. So they weren't able to do that. So they were caught in the middle like a lot of teams, but they were also the team looking for offense which there really wasn't much out there. Isn't it funny how perspective changes? I was watching the Yankee game last night, and they were talking about it like the sky is falling. You look at those standings, they're three and a half games back of a wild card, yeah. and the Angels are just three, and we talk about them as they're in the thick of a playoff chase. Well, it's about expectations. Because we live in New York. You no, know, I understand I mean, that. The Yankees I, I have made the playoffs 21 of out of 25 years. So uh, to be in last place now and have the offense that they have, sure. You know, it's it's a little bit negative. And maybe perhaps one or two moves wouldn't have changed the game for them. We sat here yesterday in these very seats and talked about Justin Verlander on the move, where he could go. How did he end up back in Houston, John? Well, I think that was the place that he wanted to be. One of his teammates told me he had a short list of teams. It was Houston or Houston. I don't know if that's exactly true. I do think potentially he might have accepted Los Angeles. You can envision that he might like Los Angeles. He would have accepted them several years ago when he went to Houston originally, but this was his <clears throat> top choice. So, look, the Mets did get two good prospects back. It's tough to evaluate the trade because it's kind of an unusual trade where you give up either 35 million or 52.5 million, but they did get two prospects back for him, considering possibly only would have accepted Houston. We do know that he liked New York very much. He made that clear. And so he wasn't going to accept a lot of teams. Houston fit. Obviously, he won two rings there. He loves Maldonado. The Cressy Institute is right there. He lives in Jupiter, spring training home in West Palm. So that was the real fit for him. He might have accepted L.A. I'm not sure he would have accepted anywhere else. So the Mets were in a tough spot. They did the best that they could, and I, I get what they did, but... I don't think they had much choice. I love his relationship with Maldonado. There's a lot of back and forth there. Were the talks with Los Angeles extensive? Because all we heard was Eduardo Rodriguez, and this deal, that Verlander deal, was done before the other got nixed. At least it appears to be. Yeah, I mean, Eduardo Rodriguez, certainly they had a deal with the Dodgers. And there were two issues with Eduardo Rodriguez. One we know about was the no trade. Uh, he had no trade to 10 teams, mostly out west. And that is... Fine and dandy, that's great. The agent, Gene Mono, did a good job there to get him that 10-team no trade. You know, his family is east. You know, for family reasons, he did not want to go west. So that was issue number one. The other issue and the reason that he really never came off the board is that opt-out, which was another good job by the agent. He had three years to go. He can opt out at the end of the year. But I think teams were concerned. What if he gets hurt? Then he's going to opt in. and We're going to owe him $49 million. Huh. You know, we expect him to opt out and be a free agent, but the alternative is negative. So it's better to get a rental than to get a guy with an opt out with three years to go. So um, I think there were two big issues in that contract, and that made it very difficult for Detroit to do the deal. So, I, you know, I can understand why this happened. It's obviously not great for Detroit. It's not great for Los Angeles, but hey, it's in his contract. 
He's well within his rights, and there's nothing wrong with putting family first. Yeah, of course, absolutely, at the forefront. But we were sitting here having a conversation about the price going up and up for Eduardo Rodriguez. Yeah. Is there a, a chance that perhaps they waited too long and that the window was no. here? No. Yeah, I think that was just chatter on TV. Okay. I don't, I don't know if yep. the price was going up. I, you know, he's a great pitcher, and I think we assume, you know, he's the second best pitcher out there to Verlander, potential ace. You know, there, are, there aren't that many pitchers. There are a lot of teams looking for pitching, but that contract weighed heavily. Having that opt-out or opt-in uh, makes a big difference. Much better to be a rental if you're going to trade the guy.